Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Design with Juzbe. Continuing with CSWA practice problems, today we'll work on question 2.3. Let's take a look at this question. So in this question, unit of measurement is millimeter gram second. So again, when we start working in SOLIDWORKS, we need to ensure we are using the same unit of measurement. Now, looking at this geometry, we have three different views. We have a 3D model, we have top view of the geometry, and we have section AA. As you can see, we have a symmetry line in this geometry. We have horizontal symmetry line and we have vertical symmetry line. In order to model this part, my preference is to focus on a 2D sketch from the top view. And then I'm going to use extruded bus feature to make three buses that I see. I have this, these buses in the right and the left, and we have this midsection. At the end, I'm going to focus on an extruded cut feature. You can see that we have these two features that are made by extruded cut features. So I'm going to focus on those two features at the end. So with this introduction, let's jump into SOLIDWORKS and start modeling this part. So in SOLIDWORKS, first thing first, we need to check unit of measurement. And you can see in the right corner that we have millimeter gram second, which is a correct unit of measurement. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to start with a 2D sketch from the top view. So what I can do here, I click on the sketch tab, I click on the sketch command, and then I'm going to select the top plane. Now, on the top plane, what I want to make, I'm going to start with two circles in a center. So to do this, from the sketch tab, I'm going to click on circle command, and then here I have one circle and I have the second one. Let's dimension these circles. So according to the geometry, the outer diameter of the circle is 105 millimeters. So from a sketch tab, I'm going to click on a smart dimension. And here, this dimension must be 105 millimeter. Also, the distance between inner circle and outer circle is 12 millimeters. So what I can do, I select this circle. I select the outer circle and this distance must be 12 millimeter. Okay, now let's focus on the right side. We need two other circles on the right side. So what I can do, I click on a sketch, I click on circle command, and here I'm gonna make one circle and also two circles. One important constraint here is that we want the center point of the circle, right circles to be in line with the center point of this circle. So I click on the center point, hold control, I click on center point of the middle circles, and then I'm gonna click on horizontal option. Now these circles will be always in a horizontal position. And the diameter of the inner circle must be 23.33. Also, the distance between inner circle and outer circle is 12 millimeter. Great. Now, what's the distance between these circles? According to the drawing, we know that the distance between the right circles and the left circles must be 175 millimeters. So, this distance should be half of that distance. 175 divided by 2, that's the distance we want. Now, let's repeat this process again for the left circles. And again, this is my approach. You have the options to choose mirror command and then use mirror command to make that circle. But here I just want to draw it because it's really simple. I click on this circle and then I'm going to have one circle, two circle. And what I can do here, I click on the inner circle, hold control, I click on this circle and from the relationships, I'm going to choose equal. And I repeat this process again. I click on this circle, I click on the this circle, and then I choose equal. And I also want the center point of the left circles to be in line with the center point of middle circles. So I'm going to choose horizontal relationship. And now, last constraint is distance. The distance should be 87.5. So I click on a smart dimension, I click on the center point, I click on center point, and this distance should be 87.5 okay awesome so now we have 
main circles of the geometry shown on this 2D sketch. Let's add the lines and make it like a closed loop. So to add lines, what I can do, I click on a sketch and I click on line command. And then here I need some lines. One, two, this is a third line. And finally, this is a last one. Remember, these lines must be tangent to the circles. That's what we usually have for the relationship between the lines and a circle. So what I can do, I select the line, I hold control, I select this circle, and then I choose tangent relationship. And I repeat this process for the other lines. Select line, select circle, tangent. Same here, select line, circle, and tangent. Line, hold control, select circle, and tangent. Here, we already have tangent relationship. Here, we already have it. And here, I click on a line, hold control, click on a circle, tangent relationship. And finally, last one, click on a line, hold control, click on a circle, and tangent relationship. Now you can see that our geometry is fully defined because every single line that you see here is shown with a black color, which means it's fully defined. Okay, awesome. So now we have the base of the geometry. Next step for us is to make extruded bus feature. To do this, what I can do, I can click on feature tab, click on extruded bus, and then I'm going to choose this circle and this circle first. Why? Because they have the same height and that height should be 25 millimeter. So I'm going to choose 25 and I hit enter. Okay. So now I have these two buses made. Let's go to the next one. To do this, I click on extruded bus. From model tree, I click on this drop down menu. I click on extruded bus one and I activate the previous sketch. And now this time, I click on this contour and this contour. The height of the contour must be equal 9 plus 3 because we have 9 millimeter as a base thickness and then in addition to that we have 3 millimeter more. So that means we are going to have 9 plus 3 equal to 12 millimeter thickness and then I click on OK. And last step is to click on extruded bus. Again from model 3 I click on a sketch 1 and this time I click on this part of the geometry. And here the overall height that we need, if you look at the geometry, it's going to be 25 millimeter plus 38 millimeter. Or you can use other options as well. So one option is to use blind extrusion with a total amount of 25 plus 38. Or the other option is that you can click on this drop down menu. You can choose offset from surface. And based on the 2D sketch that we have, based on the drawing, we can select this surface as our offset surface. And now we can tell SOLIDWORKS that we need 38 millimeter offset. So I click on 38. You don't see the geometry because the direction is wrong. So I click on reverse offset. And now you can see I have my geometry. So I click on OK. And that's the final geometry. If you want to make sure this is right, you can click on evaluate. You can click on measurement. Click on this surface and click on this surface. You can see that the distance is 38 millimeters. That means our extrusion is correct. Okay, awesome. So now we have all the features that we wanted to make with extrusion process. Last step is to make two extruded cut feature and then we are done. So let's focus on those features. To do this, first of all, let's change the view. I focus on the top plane and I'm gonna draw on this surface basically so I click on a sketch I click on a sketch command and I'm gonna select this surface now the surface is activated because I want to use offset feature to make my offset lines because if you're looking at the geometry we have consistent three millimeter wall thickness and if you remember from my previous video I mentioned that most of the time when you're dealing with consistent 
thickness, it's a good idea to use offset feature. So I'm going to repeat the same things. So I need to make offset from these lines and then I'm done. Okay, so to do that, because these lines are not actually exist right now on our sketch, what I can do, I can click on convert entities. This command helps you to make a line from your current features. So when I click on this line, when I click on this line, this line and this line, and when I click on OK, you can see now all those features are turned into black and solid lines that I can use for the future reference. So now I have these lines. Next step is to use offset commands. So to do this from a sketch, I click on offset entities. The distance that we need is three millimeter. And then I'm going to choose each of these lines. I choose this, this, and that's the offset line that I want. As I mentioned, because we are using offset entities, now this distance from the yellow line to the edge is consistent and it's always three millimeter. That's a benefit of using offset entities command. So next step, I click on OK. This is just a warning. Um, you can ignore it. Click on OK and you can see I have my offset geometry. Okay. Next step, we know that we are going to need fillet in the corners. So what I can do, I can click on fillet and then here the radius must be three millimeters. So I click here, I add three millimeter and I choose corners of my geometry for the fillet. And then you can click on OK. Awesome. So now we have a 2D sketch that we want. Next step is to use this sketch plus extruded cut feature to make the final feature. So to do this, I click on feature, I choose extruded cut, and I'm going to choose this contour. And the depth I need is going to be three millimeters. So I click here, I add three millimeter and I hit enter. Okay. Now you can see I have my geometry here. Okay. So now we need exactly same feature on the other side. So what I can do this time, I'm going to use mirror feature because it's just one feature. It's easy to use to do this from feature tab. I'm going to click on mirror command and same as always. First, we need to choose mirror plane here for the mirror plane. I'm going to choose. You can see this middle plane. So I click on it. Secondary mirror plane. We don't need that. We can click on feature to mirror. And then here, I'm going to choose cut extrude one. So I click on it. You can see the preview on the right side. So I click on OK and that's it. So you can see with combination of extruded bus features and one extruded cut features, we are able to make the final geometry. OK, so now it's time to check the total volume and see if this is a correct geometry or not. So let's go back to the question. In the question, you can see that the total volume provided is 325,633 cubic millimeters. Let's go back to SOLIDWORKS and check total volume. In SOLIDWORKS, to check the total volume, we can click on Evaluate, and then we can choose Mass Properties. And here you can see the total volume. The total volume that we found is 325,000 627 cubic millimeters. As you can see, this answer is not exactly the same as what we've seen in a question. However, it's really close. The difference between the answer that we have and the answer in a question is just 6 cubic millimeters. As a matter of fact, let, let's calculate the error that we have in our final answer. So the difference between our answer and the answer provided in a question is just five cubic millimeter. So five cubic millimeters divided by total volume, which is 325,627. And if I divide this, and if I multiply it by 100 to change it to percent, you can see the difference between the answer we found and the final answer in a question is less than two thousandths of a percent. This literally means that there's no difference. The error is so small, it's just 
within the tolerance of the geometry. And that's why I believe this is a correct answer. And as a matter of fact, in exam, if you get to the point where you can not find the exact answer, but your answer is super close to one of the options, it's easy to choose that option. And definitely that's going to be the correct answer. Okay, I think that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or feedback, please leave comments down below. Thanks again for watching. My name is Ruzbe. Hope to see you again soon in the next videos.